This episode is brought to you by Adam, this week's newest patron. The answer to today's question before you watch the video is yes, these two things make a boat way more expensive, but stick around because there is a shortcut. If you're willing to take it, you guys know I do a lot of consulting sort of in the background, helping people buy sailboats. And the hottest selling thing right now, the thing that people ask for the most, that they shop for the most, and the boats that sell the fastest right now are not $20,000 old racer cruisers or even $200,000 ocean yachts. Most people are sort of right in the middle of those two things and what they really want are these two features. But when you add them, the price jumps by 50 or even 75 grand. So it begs the question, can we get this stuff for a good price? This week on Everything You Need to Know, the aft cabin and sugar scoop as cheap as possible. Most of the people that I talk to are going solo or just as a couple, and they have in their brains what they want in a boat pretty much nailed down by the time they get to me. Safe, heavy enough for the intended waters they're gonna be going to, and reasonably comfortable, and nothing does comfort like having an aft cabin and a sugar scoop. But can we find that on any kind of reasonable budget? You see, back in the 90s, most people were rocking up on old cruising boats, like my boat. You could sail them anywhere you wanted in the Caribbean, and people are still doing that on those things. But the biggest problem with those boats was, where do you sleep? You, of course, have a V-berth, but that was a pain. You'd be cramped at one end of the boat and always climbing over each other in the middle of the night, and getting in and out wasn't exactly that easy. Also, sleeping right up in the bow meant that at anchor, if the seas were a bit choppy, the bed would go up and down all night, and not in a good way. I mean, several feet up and down. It sucks. Trust me. More often, if you were lucky enough, you would have a drop table in the saloon, and you might use that. Drop it into a bed and call it good. But then you're always changing it from a saloon or living room setup to a bedroom setup, and then back again. And you couldn't get a really nice mattress to sleep on because it wouldn't fit. And when the table was up, nothing worked properly, and the cushions had separations in them. So you'd always end up having one arm or one leg stuck in the crack between the cushions when you woke up in the morning. The other thing that these old boats gave us as an option was a quarter berth. A lot of boats had that. And that's great if you're sleeping alone, or as most of us do, you just use it for storage. This is the comfort problem that most buyers right now just, they aren't willing to live with it. Answer the aft cabin. The manufacturers designed the back of the boat a little bit wider and a little bit taller, and they gave room to put a queen or a double, or in some cases even a king-size bed, in the back of the boat, under the cockpit, and this took off quickly. Suddenly they had solved the master bedroom problem, and some even got so big as to become an almost walk-around near proper bedroom. The next problem with these older style boats was where to get on and off the boat. You look at just about anything from the 70s or 80s and it just looks like none of the manufacturers even cared. They were like, here's a boarding ladder, climb over the side, you lazy sailor. Not only is this a huge pain in day-to-day -day life, but imagine having to load jerry cans full of water or fuel and groceries from the dinghy. Not to mention when you just wanted to go snorkel or swim off the back of the boat. It was a pain. The 90s finally saw a solution to this problem too. The sugar scoop. Finally, manufacturers let us walk through the transom instead of climbing over the stern rail. And now we get a platform on the back to stand on, to climb up onto, to load and unload heavy things from the dinghy. The power boats always had this and finally, now we did too. But because these two things are so sought after in the market, the price of a boat that has them jumps up dramatically. The boat itself might actually be worse than the old racer cruiser. But because of those things, it doubles in price. If you want to go now and your budget is, let's say, 50 grand, odds are you're just going to have to do it without these features or you're going to have to keep on saving. 
So is there a way that we can get one of these boats that's still a reasonably good boat for a price that kind of makes sense? The answer is sort of. You have to understand that if an aft cabin and sugar scoop are must-haves for your boat, you're going to be paying for them. But there is a shortcut, sort of, if you're willing to take it. Before we get started today, I created a second YouTube channel. It's called Histercy, and it's all about maritime history. I just released my second episode, and I'll put a link at the top, and I'll put one down in the description for you. If you like history, I'd love for you to check it out. It's a brand new channel too, so I hope that you'll help me out by subscribing to it and giving the videos a thumbs up. And of course, if you could comment on either one of those videos with what you want to see in future episodes, that would be awesome. The first two episodes are out and they're on the Erie Canal. History C publishes every Monday and Lady K sailing videos are still going to be coming out every Friday. The easiest and cheapest way for you to get a functional sailboat with an aft cabin and sugar scoop that you can take south right now is to do the obvious thing. Just buy a mid 30 foot Beneteau. Here is a 343 and you'll see these all over the map for about 80 grand or less. They made them from 2005 to 2008 so they're not even that old. They weigh some 12,000 pounds which I consider to be about the minimum if you're going to be hitting the Bahamas and the Caribbean and onward. They draft just shy of 5 feet and the headroom is about 6'6". Six, six. It's basically the cookie cutter way to get a cheap boat for some light coastal cruising and Caribbean island hopping. The only reason not to buy one of these is that it's just 35 feet and 35 isn't all that much for long term live aboard cruising type stuff, ask me how I know. In that 35 feet though, we get a nice, albeit narrow, saloon area with a good little galley and that V-berth up front that will only be forcing our guests to sleep in. What's important here is that we get that big bed in the back and for a 35 footer, this is a lot of bed. You still have to climb over whomever sleeps on the forward side of the bed, but we can have a real mattress and a dedicated place for that mattress to be. And we get the privacy of a separate bedroom with a door that closes. Out back, of course, on the 343, you can just walk right through the transom onto the sugar scoop slash boarding ladder slash swim platform slash diving board. It gives us what we wanted for 80 grand in a boat that'll pretty well do the job. If that 35 foot business bothers you as much as it honestly bothers me, I have a 35 and I've lived on it for years. It's not enough boat. You could spend 10 grand more and get this boat's big brother, the Genoa Sun Odyssey 39. Genoa and Beneteau are closely related because not only are they both made in France, they're actually both the same company. This Sun Odyssey is four feet longer, but much more comfortable as they added 4,000 pounds, bringing it to over 16,000 pounds total. She's also wider and deeper and gives us that much more footprint in the boat for our money. And in proper Genoa fashion, she's a twin helm, so it's easier to navigate the cockpit. Inside, we get everything we got before, just bigger, a bigger, more spacious, spacious saloon with bigger seating, a bigger galley. We get move, room to move around in here. We get a bigger head and, of course, a bigger V-berth to make the guests sleep in up front at the uncomfortable end of the boat. At the back, this boat goes a step further and gives us two aft cabins. A lot of these Genoes did this, it's for chartering usually, where they split the back in half and give you matching private staterooms. Or if you look around at different models, you can find them with one big stateroom. Both of these boats are local to the US and for just shy of 100 grand for a boat that is about 15 years old is not bad. But there is sort of a shortcut to find tons and tons of these aft cabin sugar scoop yachts Many that are even newer than these two, if you're willing to do something a little bit crazy, something a bit more inconvenient, something a bit more tropical. The shortcut here is to buy an ex-charter boat from the Caribbean. These charter companies only buy the hottest, latest, and greatest boats, so they always have aft cabins and sugar scoops and all the latest features, and they always have to be relatively new and well-maintained for the charter company to use it. We did an episode on buying a charter boat, and I'll put a link at the top. Basically, every five years or so, the big, reputable charter companies will sell all of their boats all at once. And you can usually buy one far below the market value for that make and model. 
but you have to be willing to go get it or at least start your sailing adventure from wherever that boat happens to be, usually the Virgin Islands. The big and reputable charter companies keep their boats in very good operating condition because allowing boats to break down is bad for business. You can't make any money off a boat that's sitting there waiting for repairs. Often they keep very good records too of oil changes and impeller changes, anodes, things like that, and any work done on the boat. So you'll probably be able to see with confidence the boat's whole service history and get an idea of how well it was cared for. Here's an example of what I'm on about. For the same hundred grand we saw in the other two 15 or so year old boats, here's a boat that's barely five years old. In boat years, that's basically brand new. This is a Genoa you know, 349, and not only do you get a sugar scoop, you get a full on posh fold down transom for that huge waterfront property on the back end of your boat. You get the twin helms that these Genoas you know, are good for and a good sized cockpit. Inside we get the typical 33 footer layout, which is not impressive. It's opposing settees with a smaller galley and a V-berth up front and at the back split aft cabins. If you need something bigger than that though, and a little bit more posh, here's a 2007 Bavaria, a 42, still under a hundred grand sitting in the Caribbean right now. Where else are you gonna find this ridiculous amount of cockpit space with the open transom and the sugar scoop for this kind of money, under a hundred grand? And look at it, we get the twin helm and we get a cockpit that would be totally comfortable with 12 or 15 people in it for sundowners and a separate space at the back for the people that are swimming and keep climbing back into the boat soaking wet. This is a proper 42 footer. Inside, the theme of space and luxury continues on this boat with a big C-shaped settee and a bench with the galley down the port side wall. The space in here is ridiculous for the price and we even get a huge nav desk to work at. Up front, they've near perfected the V-berth with a semi walk around style of bed. Though I'm not in love with the split down the middle of the mattresses. I get it, it makes it easier to access the storage underneath, but the crack down the middle would drive me bonkers. I'd pretty quickly replace this with a proper mattress. Out back, being a charter layout, we get the split aft private cabins that are of decent size. So really, this is a spacious three bedroom floating home with two bathrooms and a backyard that you simply cannot beat. You may be getting a lot for your hundred grand here, but remember, you have to fly there to go see it. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. I definitely couldn't do it without you guys. A big shout out to all the existing patrons. If you'd like to help out the channel, please consider becoming a patron. I'm sort of in this position right now with a lot of you. If you're who I'm talking about in this video anyway, um, do I take a thirty to $50,000 boat and just go south without the comfort of the sugar scoop in the aft cabin? Or do I hold out and keep saving to spend a hundred grand on sort of the whole package? It's a tough question and as somebody who has done it on a cheaper boat, I don't have any regrets. It is doable. It's manageable without those cool features. It's still a great time. You're still in paradise. Would I do it again on the same boat? Likely yes, but I'd much rather have something more comfortable. For my hundred grand, I'm really in love with this last boat, a Delphia 40 from 2007, sitting in Grenada, just below the hurricane belt. She's 40 feet of just about everything I could ask for in a Caribbean island hopper, and then some. This thing is about as nice as it gets, and the pictures really do do all the talking here. This is a wide, comfortable, ocean-going boat coming in at over 18,000 pounds. That's the heaviest we've seen today. They started building them in 03 and you'll see them come up for sale from time to time, usually well over a hundred grand. So this one's really interesting. This one is already outfitted too because it's been cruising. So you get things already done like solar panels, wind generator, life raft, and a dinghy. Even davits have been installed at probably pretty high cost. The craftsmanship inside is top notch too. It genuinely looks like a comfortable, nice place to spend your time. We get some modern touches too, like a furling mainsail. We get a nice bimini with a screen enclosure out back so we can enjoy the weather even if it's a bit windy and cold. The cockpit's big enough too without being so big like the Genoa that you fall down every time the boat's on a heel. And they've already fitted screens to everything to keep the bugs out. 
She's even already got a water maker and all stainless steel tankage, 92 gallons of water and 55 of fuel. You get two heads too, and they just had new cushions made for the cockpit. All the sails were just replaced too a few years ago. I really love that boat, that Delphia, and if I were spending a hundred grand on a sailboat right now to solo sail the Caribbean or do it with a partner, I'm finding it hard to find anything more appropriate and comfortable at that price point. And speaking of, I get a lot of requests from folks for help that are boat shopping right now. So I dedicated a page over at ladykaysailing.com that you can go to to book an hour of my time if you need it. It's ladykaysailing.com forward slash consults. If you want to continue the conversation, don't hesitate to jump on the Lady K Discord. We've got a whole great community over there doing nonstop boat talk all the time, day and night. I'll leave a link below. Until next week, guys, keep the heavy side down but not too far down. We'll see you.